I'd like to focus really on the, the wider dimension of, of lifelong uh, career guidance and the need for it. And, and I think it's worth us reflecting on the fact that career guidance as is career development is a dynamic process and, and not an event. So we should think of it in terms of making it available to people in ways that suits their needs at any given time. People can expect to experience many changes in their working careers, some voluntary, some enforced. And to keep pace with the demand for skills and to find fulfillment in work, people will make many decisions over their lifetime, including for some change in career direction. This may require a financial as well as an emotional investment when it comes to further education and reskilling. And as with other significant investment decisions, people ought to be able to get professional help and to know where and how to access it. Now, many of Career England's members are providers of the National Career Service. And the National Career Service is a highly effective and nationally available resource for people from the age of 13 onwards. The reality, though, being that the service is targeted most at people aged 18 and over. And even then, for some people more than others, according to national priorities. Due to available funding, the National Career Service is constructed in such a way as it limits a wider level of access to more intensive forms of support, like ongoing face-to-face -face guidance. Whilst we understand that a universal offer comes at a cost, we believe that the current system of access ought to be flexed to take account of individual circumstances and local labour market conditions for the National Career Service to be most effective. Another matter for consideration is the low public profile of the National Career Service. It is often remarked that it's a well-kept secret due to the absence of a high profile national publicity campaign when compared with other government programmes. It's not only the public, but also politicians who have limited awareness and understanding of what the service offers and to whom. Uh, in last week's uh, House of Lords um, reading of the skills and post-16 education bill, we saw a demand from peers for the bill to have greater regard for the need for careers advice and guidance, which is largely absent from the bill in its current form. Numerous comments made referred to the role of the careers and enterprise company, understandably, and to careers hubs, but with only one passing reference to our national career service. This has also been particularly evident during the pandemic. The government launched its plan for jobs and has marketed a raft of new training and employment measures, whilst failing to trumpet the increased funding for a national career service to help people navigate these options. This, we believe, is a missed opportunity. Longer periods of unemployment are often harder to move on from and come at a significant personal and economic cost for individuals and society. The sooner help is available for people facing redundancy, the sooner they're able to take action and move back into work. So we ask for the government to integrate access to careers guidance into the various training and employment measures on offer through the, the plan for jobs. Whilst it's important to have a national blueprint for the provision of careers advice, we call upon the government to provide greater flexibility to the National Career Service in different local labour markets to ensure the availability of people with required skills for the opportunities that are available in their locality. As argued by a number of peers in the, debil in the bill debate last week, we need a joined up place-based employment skills and career system. This should include the ability for National Career Service providers to negotiate agreed local priority groups and for the government to look at the relative tariffs available to support this according to local labour market conditions. As the government seeks to level up, it must ensure that it supports people and areas by making its programmes relevant to local circumstances and fit the different conditions that exist between areas. Giving national career service providers the dedicated funds to publicise and market the service must go hand in hand with the flexibility to meet local needs and for them to be consulted in the development and execution of local and regional skills planning so that people are able to access opportunities that are best suited to their needs and to their skills. The careers guidance guarantee also draws attention to the difficulties facing national career service providers in recruiting and equipping suitably qualified professionals. Whilst there is a recognition of the need for professionally trained staff, the levels of funding on offer compared with other better funded government education, employment and training programmes are such that they don't adequately provide for this, nor do they enable providers to invest in the ongoing professional development that is vital to the quality of services on offer. 